2020. And uh, first, I want to start by thanking uh, Dom, primetime treasure hunter, who had me on New Year's Day yesterday because I was too lazy to do a New Year's Day show. Actually, I was a little hungover. But um, long story short, who better to bring on my first show of the year than WW Wade, Big Wade's Venture, WV out in Oregon. What's up, Mr. Wade? We don't need no introductions or anything. <sighs> Life is good. Life is good. 2020, you always have all these, you know, these cool uh, goals that you want to set. For me, I want to lose 100 pounds, but we'll see. That Woo! was like my last five years <laughs> of goals. So Wait, 100 pounds? You'll be yeah. like nothing. You'll be half a man. I, I'm like uh, 205 right now, so I'm pretty heavy. So maybe well, how tall? You're a little shorter, so how tall are you? Yeah, I'm 5'10". So. 5'10". Okay, so you're not yeah. too bad. I, uh, I'm hovering just under that 200, so like 197, 196, but I am like 6'1", so yeah, uh, it's a little better. I would like to ultimately be like 180 to 190, so yeah. I need about 10 to 15 off. Um, yeah. What's your primary vice? We're starting off on the wrong end of the spectrum, but what do you think it is? Is it is it not working out? Is it eating? What do you think it is? Well, I work out. I do work out with the storage unit stuff, but like I think... <laughs> I think it's just straight, like, you know, I, I'm all over the place constantly. And I think it's just, you know, preparing meals or eating healthy when I'm on the road or mm -hmm. you know, I've got something to do and I'll hit the fast food. Mm -hmm. which, uh, I, yeah, yeah, that's, that's mine because when I used to go off sourcing a lot, I always try to, Oh, I'll get a grilled chicken at McDonald's or I'll get a yeah. subway sub, but then I drench it in like ranch <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. Or you have the intention of getting like a salad when you, before you roll up to the menu. And then you know what the menu is already. You've been there, right? And then the salad doesn't end up to be spoken out. No, of. we act like we've never seen a, uh, a McDonald's <laughs> menu. In they they put the salad on the right hand corner, and you know it's there. But yep. Yep. it's always down in the bottom lower tiny <laughs> right hand corner on purpose. Yeah. So um, yeah, we want to welcome in everybody, uh, and we open that with that little bit of I call that our comedian monologue there. Um, yeah. Goals of 2020, and so uh, everyone's got them. I love to hear them in the chat in the comments. Uh, but we have two specific things, too, that we're going to talk about um, tonight. And one of them uh, I've been talking about, and I'm going to leave it for the end, but I want to jump right into Wade's meat and bones here. Um, a lot of you guys asked me, you asked Wade all year long. A um, couple times I seen Wade, I punched him a few times and said, get on it. Uh, a lot of people know that back in the day, I used to sell storage or buy storage units, sell them. Uh, I stopped, uh, and now Wade is kind of the guy, you know, long after my days of over, that he does this. This is what he does. What do you think? 80% of your business? 70% of your business? Yeah, at least 80. I mean, vast majority of everything I sell online is from storage units. So, storage yep. units, there you go. Um, now, fast forward, I want to say mine, I've been in this house six years. We stopped, right? So, 2013 is when I stopped doing storage units. 2014, mm -hmm. uh, I've bought a few here and there since, but, um, it's been a lot of change since the last five to six years. Huge. It has. Yeah. I mean, you're still going to find a lot of storage unit, live storage auctions that you can go to. But a lot of these mom and pop smaller facilities are going online now because they don't have to have a auctioneer and give them a piece. Also, it's easier for them. They don't have to have people on their premises. Um, they can just literally put it online, take, snap some photos, and then you got to go pick it up. So it's becoming a uh, – uh, I still think that the live auctions won't die per se, but I do think a lot more is going online. So it opposes a different challenge because you can't physically see the stuff, you know, you're going off of the pictures of yep. what people take. So it does, it takes a little bit of, of skill. You know, when I first heard about the online auctions was probably a year and a half ago. I don't know, whenever my first video was on it. And uh, I was blown away by just logging in going, wow, like this is so much different than standing yeah. there going like 50, 51, one, one, <laughs> way different. Yeah. And I even had some experience back in the day here. It's sad, but um, we had a live auction, like actual individual items. Yeah. Uh, and the old guy, really old guy, Pat, he ran it for 30 years, passed away. His son didn't want to do it, so they sold it. Um, but standing there doing those auctions, and then now there's a similar business here that does it online mm -hmm. with individual items. And they, it's just so different. You can't pick it up. You can't look yeah. at it. Um, you can't go in and like they sell boxes and, and pallets of stuff. Sometimes it's just different. Um, which is why people like you that keep up with it and do it have that advantage. Um, yep. and that's what we want to talk about is how somebody that's watching us right now, um, may be interested in doing storage units or live in a town. Um, speaking of big towns and little towns, right? Both. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look, it's, um, I think now is a fantastic time to buy storage units. Think about this. Like, you know, you, you can't be complacent in the way that you source. Um, 
the one thing that you guys do is you probably go to Goodwill, places like that. You probably go to Salvation Army, thrift stores, and um, all that stuff, right? <laughs> How many times have you seen Casey, my man over here, be like, well, these prices are ridiculous? It, like, yeah, you know, this I I did the video about like Goodwill going crazy, like $30 mm -hmm. jeans or whatever. And people were like, okay, Casey, like we got it. Some of our cities are the same. What do we do? And so some people, they live in Minnesota. Kate's family's from there. It's minus 20. There's eight feet of snow. And they're like, we can't go to yard sales or garage sales. Yeah. You live somewhere where it rains every three minutes. So yeah. Yeah. um what are other solutions? And I'm like, well, you know, let's talk about other solutions. And so yeah. storage units online, you don't have to leave your house no. to buy it. Yep. I literally can buy them in my boxers, guys, whatever I want. I just That's a scary it. vision going um, on. <laughs> <laughs> but all I can say is this, look, it's, um, it's one of the, the few ways that you can purchase a lot of merchandise to sell on eBay and Amazon. I do it. Um, I, the biggest thing too, is, um, it's, it's, it's an opportunity that really, um, I don't, it's hard to say, but I really, uh, I've never really lost on too many units because the, the, the unit that you buy has so much stuff in it. Typically yep. that's really hard to lose on storage units unless you put your, you got to put yourself in the best position to win. And that's why, um, you know, we created this cool thing, but more importantly, it's, it's a great way to source, especially if you, um, want a lot of merchandise that you can put online, eBay, Amazon, and um, and believe it or not, Poshmark. I sell a lot of stuff like decor and different things that you now can sell on Poshmark. Home and, goods. Um, so yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's growing. It's been. I'm sure you guys have all seen some storage unit videos on YouTube now. Like the trend is, and everybody's yep. doing it now. So and there's a, there's a reason. You know, some of these guys uh, that you just mentioned at some of the channels are doing fantastic. Uh, Wade's got a, a lot of good videos. You know, even our buddy Jason, who is in the chat, is thrift trader. Um, who I know he's been busy with the uh, with the new thrift store. How's that going, Jason? I, I talked to him a little bit, um, but he he's done quite a few uh, storage videos throughout 2019. So plenty of uh, videos between the two of them you can watch. And uh, while we're on that topic, speaking of videos, um, Wade is the guy. Look, I know a lot about a lot of things. I know a little bit about a little things. And storage units have changed so much that I probably call myself a 33% knowledgeable. Um, Thank you, Alexis, for the super chat. Appreciate it, darling. Um, and Wade's the guy when when something is above my knowledge. You know, last night I, I shouted out Tanya, thrift trader. I don't know the first thing about – or uh, thrifty trader about jewelry. Mm -hmm. I send them to where they should go, and Wade's the guy that's going to teach you storage units. If you want to know storage units, um, you know, that's 100 – you put – tell me how much time you put into – creating and i'm just gonna tell you guys 120 individual videos if you want to see him open storage units go to his channel watch his content um but beyond that 120 120 videos guys think about this like i'm on youtube i've got 62,000 people that follow me on youtube i only have 300 videos on my youtube channel so this this storage unit uh course is basically half of what i have posted on my own individual youtube channel so it's um for me, like I want, I want people. It's I want people to watch it, all the videos, learn it, and then be like, "Darn, I would have spent like five hundred to a thousand dollars on this course." And that's kind of the reason that that's kind of the basis that I went up, um, you know, approached is I want people to learn that the business, learn how to sell. We even have a licensed CPA that did six videos on different deductions and different types of you know LLC, sole proprietor, went through all that. Um, we did a crazy job. I, I all of it. It's funny. You're gonna see me out in the wild. Not only teaching you storage units. I went to the dump, showed you guys the dump, different ways you can donate. Um, the it's 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 crazy, and it's um it's one way. The storage unit business is a lot more than just raising your hand and winning the unit because yeah, anybody could do that. Um, the idea here is is you need to learn how to profile the unit, what things to look for, what things not to look for, like. The, um, some of the stuff that the professionals do, like if you see furniture and the bottom of the furniture is scratched, they probably have pets or, you know, cats or dogs or something, right? Like, or, you know, how much dust is caked on? Like, um, what does the merchandise look like? Is it, is it stacked nicely or is it all over the place? How do they take care of their items? How long have they been there? Like all this stuff is in play when you're buying storage units. And I wanted to kind of spell that all out in one area so you can kind of get the whole thing and put yourself in the best position to win. And that's kind of the idea. And, and there's, there's a hundred, I was going to mention half of this didn't even come to my mind, but you know, there's other things about taking in the storing the items after you get them, transporting the items, 
um, you know, uh, pricing the items when you're looking yeah. at what you're looking at, of course, to, you know, bid on what you can see, bid on what you know, bid on uh, worst case scenarios. Yeah. Uh, I was leaning towards that side. Wade just tossed out a few little free nuggets there that I didn't even think of um, right off the top. So um, if you guys want to check out, if you've never seen Wade's channel, I can't imagine that you haven't. He's got like 62,000 or 63,000 um, subscribers on YouTube. His YouTube channel is linked below. Go check that out. Step one, check his channel out. Subscribe to his channel. He put up the video yesterday, right? Was it yesterday, last night? Yep, did the video yesterday. Yep. And then you can roll back through and watch some of his storage unit videos. I'm sure he's got them either in a playlist or just search yeah. the word storage unit. Um, check it out. See what he uh, see what he's done. See what he's put up, and you'll get a you know a little bit of uh, a quick 101 education. And then go to that video from last night. And if this is something you know. Please do it if you're serious, if you want to jump in. And uh, in fact, I know Wade, just before we jumped on here, said if there's some serious people that really want to work with Wade mm -hmm. and really want to do storage units, if you think that's the angle that is going to be best for your business, um, you're interested in hard goods and a mix of everything, um, if people are ready to jump on it right now during this live show, um, and Wade can tell you how many people he feels like working with. Uh, I'll leave that to him. But go ahead and tell him what you told me before uh, we came on here about if you're ready right now, if this is you. Wood Thrifter, thank you so much, my man. So, yes, I want – look, um, Casey is amazing. I've been a few, on his channel a few times. We go to Vegas and we, 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 we drink. We have fun every year. We act stupid. Uh, yeah, we act stupid. We go on limos. We do these crazy things. <laughs> And um, so I wanted to do something for his audience, kind of similar to what I did with my audience. So 10 people that sign up, I'll give you my personal cell phone number. And so you can call me and you'll not only get the course, obviously, and you can watch all those videos. But if maybe possibly, if you're going to live auctions, I can help you maybe some tips or tricks there. If you're going to online auctions, what we can do is you can give me your zip code and I'll take a look at some online auctions over the course of a few weeks or a month and kind of give you pointers at different things that I see in the storage units near you if you want to get inventory for your area. So um, the first 10 people only, just message me on Insta, say, hey, I bought the course when I was with uh, the live show there. And then what will happen here is I will actually give you my phone number, you call me, and it's not just one phone call. If you want to call me a couple of times so we can kind of go over some storage units in your area and I'll profile the storage units and tell you what I think. Maybe we can put yourself in the best position to kind of get a really good unit. Um, we'll do that. And, and keep in mind too, like, this is 120 videos of blood, sweat, and tears, but this is gonna, um, I'm gonna be adding another 80 videos. So once you buy the course, when I upload another video, Kajabi, that the, the program that I use will send you a notification saying, hey, there's a new video out. You don't actually pay extra for those 80 more videos I'm planning on doing. You can consume that content with the same price you're paying now. So you're yeah. gonna continuously get videos throughout the next year. Um, not only about storage units, but also reselling, because there's like 40 videos just for resellers. like. Yeah. Out of beautiful photos and everything. So yeah, we said that afterwards. Like it's just one thing to buy the units, but now you gotta you know turn them over. Yeah. So a lot of the merchandise you get from storage units. Uh, question I get probably a lot in the emails and people ask me about you and stuff. What is the majority of you know your mix? Like give us a breakdown percentage wise of what you think uh, the type of stuff that you're selling. Before you do though, look, you get Wade's phone number. I have to message him on Facebook. I don't even get to message him through. His phone number. You gotta buy the course, Casey. Come on, my man. I know. I know. I gotta be one of the ten. Um, um, what's that breakdown? Yeah, <laughs> seriously, it's um, so you find all kinds of stuff in storage, and it's really a situational based. Um, a lot of clothing, I find a lot of shoes. One of my best units I bought netted me close to eighty thousand dollars, and it was an ex uh, Nike director and had a bunch of clothes in there, brand new with tags. So you're gonna find that you're gonna find a lot of clothes. Um, you're gonna find a lot of electronics. You're gonna find some household items too. Like you'll find a KitchenAid, I find a lot of KitchenAid mixers and stuff like that. So it's kind of a mix between hard goods and clothing. The idea with storage units for me is you wanna be kind of, think of yourself as a sniper, right? You really wait for the correct unit because there's one thing I can tell you, there's always gonna be more auctions. So it's the, it's the people that wait, find the best ones and go in those um, rather than you know, um, just buying a bunch of units. I mean, that that's one option, but you've got to have room. And we kind of go over all this in the course. A lot of it depends on your space that you have as well. Um, we I went through consignment stores to show you that's an option. I went through antique malls and did a video on that to show you kind of that's an option if you don't have a retail space. It blows my mind of how much yeah. like you went through the places yeah. you went and stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's 
And it's not just me behind a computer, which is completely fine, but I want to be out in the wild and show you and film for you. And um, so we did all this stuff. I, you can see me really nasty and dirty out there throwing mattresses in a big dumpster, <laughs> right? Um, so it's part it, of it. That's part of it. Yeah. And here's the thing. We all love thrifting, right? We all love going to Goodwill and seeing that item and be like, dang, we can buy it for $2 and we can sell for 40 or 50. But I can tell you that storage units all day long will trump that because if you buy a good storage unit, that whole unit may be full of really expensive stuff. And typically yeah. the person that owns the storage unit has, if they collect something, they collect multiples and you'll have a lot of something that's worth something. So um, it's one of those things that you need for 2020. I, 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 I really would strongly suggest that you look at all avenues to source from, not just what you're used to. Yeah, you have to, I've got to preach it in the entire month of December through January, alternative sourcing. Like there are so many other things and places. In fact, one of the places that I told people was to talk to storage unit buyers because they some of them deal with certain things they don't deal with others or they just wanna move stuff as quick as they can. And storage unit guys, especially if they buy a good unit and have good margin, good room, they'll sell stuff to move inventory. Like absolutely. So um, there's so many angles, you know, and if you're that storage unit buyer, by getting storage units, people may start approaching you to say, hey, if you get um, any uh, cans of cashews, I'll be happy to take all your cans of cashews mm -hmm. off you right now. Somebody asked me what I was eating and drinking. It's it's cashews, guys. It's nothing <laughs> serious. Um, and Red Bull. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's ways to move. And I, I don't know if you touch on that again. I haven't seen the videos yet, guys. I've seen some samples and I've watched all of his videos. I will have uh, access and probably some homework to watch mm -hmm. them in the next week or two. Um, but yeah. uh, you, you touch on selling the merchandise on the other side. So yeah, everything guys. And, and the cool thing too, is like, it gets to a point when you buy storage units that you have so much fashion, so much clothes, <laughs> that more than likely what you're going to do. Cause a lot of the expensive stuff's in the hard, hard goods. Right. So what a lot of times what you'll do is you'll box it up and sell it to other resellers. So you can gain that time back and focus more on hard goods, which is a lot of the stuff you'll find in storage units. It's worth good money. Right. So yeah. you can sell the clothes too. Um, we go through everything, right? Um, I, I went through like, you know, how to take photos, beautiful white photos. We all know how to do that. And just everything you can think of that kind of correlates with storage units. And the beautiful thing though, is this is the last course I'm ever going to do probably. So what that means for you is every single kind of uh, nugget that I can think of over the course of the next year, I'm planning on doing a video and adding it to the course, whether that's reselling related or storage unit related. So you're kind of going to be buying a library of everything for the next few years of kind of what I, what I've done and my experiences, that's, um, not just what, yeah, the updates are priceless. I mean, Kajabi, listen guys, the Kajabi site is one that I considered using. I just had this chat with, with, with Wade too. It, it's really easy and I, and I may still upgrade and go to it. Uh, it's really easy yeah. as creators for us to, add content to it. You could just upload it, create a new thing. And, and then it sends it out to every person that's ever been a part of that. You just click the button and it goes whoop out. It goes. So I looked into it and I did like a free trial type thing mm -hmm. and uh, it's pretty good. Am I going, and this is a great question. Am I going back into storage units? So um, I have a lot of things planned this year. Storage units didn't make it on my list of like 2020. There's two reasons why one I've kind of made my business the whole, you know, I used to run the office with tons of stuff and, and that was cool and it's awesome to have like storage units and stuff, but it takes a lot of you know, uh, time to transport and store and do all that stuff. And because I already have other stuff going on, it may be hard for me. I am thinking about hiring employees again. You know, I've had two employees at once. I'm thinking about going back to it. If I do, time frees up, the storage unit thing may become uh, part of what I do because we are thinking of buying, everyone knows I'm gonna be moving, buying another house. And our old plan was to buy a house that had um, a bonus room above the garage to set up as like an office with an external door for an employee to come in. Um, we're actually thinking about maybe buying a house with a, a outbuilding on the property. Um, and if that happens, I'll have storage for storage. So it is something you do have to think about as the storage side of it. Um, you're going to have couches, you're going to have chairs, you're going to have tables, you're going to have stuff that you have to do things with. So yeah, that's kind of my thing. If I get it set up, then yeah, that's something I might think about. And think about it too, like <clears throat> most of my career buying storage units, I've done it for six years now, um, seriously, is I've had HOA and I and for the vast majority of that, I never had a warehouse. So you're talking to somebody that's like you who probably has very little room 
and only a garage, sometimes not mm -hmm. even that. I park my trailer out there, and they're they're out there giving me tickets, guys. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. it's straight HOA. So, um, you know, that's that's really cool from from your standpoint when you watch the videos. Is you're gonna kind of relate to like I can relate to you and and kind of your situation because space is super key. It's it, it's one of the w main reasons why people kind of fail at storage units is managing that space because it can get overwhelming quickly. Um, <laughs> And I, that's why I do so many videos to kind of help you and, and give you ideas like consignment stores. If you want to do that, that will free up space, but will still allow you to sell something, get foot traffic to that item and make a little money. There's so many different ways that you can do it. So that's kind of what it is. I mean, think about 120 videos. You guys can seriously grab popcorn for three days straight and, and see this face on a course. <laughs> I got, I got to do it. <laughs> I got to do it. Listen. Wade flicks and chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meg, Megan's up on the screen right now. And I, when she put that uh, up there, I was thinking like, who was it? All you guys are following her on Instagram. She's amazing. But she walked by me and I didn't know this when I was in Vegas this year, I was playing uh $200 blackjack hands at once. And I lost like 800 bucks at once. And I see her, uh, well, I didn't see her actually. She she filmed me, and then all of a sudden I get this notification, and, and she's like, "Look at Wade losing his ass at the blackjack table." And I didn't even know until I saw her notification on her live show. <laughs> I walked away from you when I saw you playing. I stopped. I came around you, and I was like, "What are you doing?" You're like losing money. I'm like, "Peace." <laughs> oh, <laughs> no part of that. <laughs> I was I was doing well when you were there, but it was. Uh, yeah. uh, I I'll tell you what I I remember in Vegas. God, I don't remember what time it was, but holy crap, it must have been. Was it the poker table that it was super late? Like yeah. you and Jason yeah. were at like two, three in the morning. I was hung over it pretty much. I oh was my god! It was so, and I'm like, I thought I could hang, and I'm like, no way. <laughs> in my defense, here's the problem: y'all are used to West Coast time. I'm not. Yeah. 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 I, had, I had jet lag. That's my defense. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Wade was hammering. He was winning some sports bets even before we got there. He, you got there the day before us, and you were sending me pictures of you with yeah. the sports bets. I'm yeah. like, Jesus. Oh yeah. I'm that, trying to go to like the two dollar shop place to save money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, yeah, I, I go there for fun for sure. But eBay opens amazing. Hopefully, you guys. Now I know it's kind of somewhat early, but save for it now. It's even like maybe fifty bucks or something a week if you can. Yeah, I mean, what do we what do we got? Seven seven months. So to to yeah. January to February, March, April, May, June, and then three weeks in July. So five. So you got twenty three weeks, and yeah. a normal single person should be able to do it for two grand if you don't kill yourself. So you yeah. only need eighty six bucks a week. Whoever it is that's watching this right now to go to Vegas um, without blowing through it, or maybe your tax return. If you get your tax return back and you get a yeah. thousand or two. Buy the plane ticket, buy the hotel for a thousand. You can do a hotel and plane ticket for a thousand or less. Um, so, my hotel for six nights uh, after tax tag and everything was 130 a night. So it was uh, like 780. And then the plane tickets for one person should be about three to 350. So a grand will get you there and then stay. And then you've got the rest of the year to save for spending money in a ticket. So and um, you can sports with me. Let's see if we can't get some of that money back, guys. Right. Let's be responsible. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and, and buy storage units the rest of the year. So, Casey, do you think we can do uh, a quick screen share and I can give these guys a, yeah. kind of an idea of what they're going to get? Yep. Um, Show it. Uh, you've got your screen share up. Yeah, yeah. Let me do this real quick. So, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up um, the program, but remember, this is kind of my view, not your view. So, uh, mm -hmm. this will be my view of it, but it'll kind of give you an idea of a few of the uh, kind of videos that you're going to receive here. Okay. So, let me go ahead and screen share this bad boy. Yeah, Adam is here. Our admin, Adam, was here. 140 a night. Yeah, I think I think the special they ran was 90 for Mandalay, and then it was it was 35 dollar resort fee, so that's 125, and then like tax and all. It's like 130, 140. Yeah. Um, Donatello says she's scared to go to eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we would okay, have. So here we go. I'm adding I'm adding Wade's uh, screen share here. I'm gonna make okay. it full screen for you here. Hang on. Okay, so let me know if you guys can see it here. Let me get rid of the um, – let me get rid of that. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay let me actually make this bigger here too. Make sure that nothing crazy is on the screen. Okay, so <laughs> – <laughs> no, I'm joking. Come on, guys. Okay, so I'm kind of a perfectionist, and so some of these videos are, are you know, I just put everything here. I want you guys to be prepared, right? So this is not what you're going to see. This is what I'm going to see. Normally what you'll do is you'll click the video, and this is, again, what I'll see, but you'll see – 
pretty much all these videos. You can click play. I also put a lot of information down here in the body of it. In fact, more tips are in the body where you can read than the actual video sometimes because when I post the video, I go back and kind of chain my thought process and put as much as I can down below. So this is, give you an idea, this is what 120 videos will look like. And you'll probably see this right around 200 to 250 by the end of the year. Jesus. So your price that you're getting, and so I also teach you all the big online sites, the different bidding techniques. The ones that you see without the play button means that I still need to do those. There's five of those. Um, going up here, I, I kind of passed it. I teach you what to look for, what not to look for. And then I kind of categorize that based on live and online auctions because I want to um, kind of go over both, right? Um, so this is basically a lot of videos that you can consume. It's basically a buck of video is what you're paying and that's it. The tools needed is another one. I even show you how to operate an elevator, guys. <laughs> uh, oh my God. A lot of you guys actually freight elevators is a big thing, right? How mm -hmm. to build the mattresses, the dump, right? Um, you know, a lot of people have never seen a dump before and I give you some tips or tricks regarding the dump, um, where to donate items. I even give you an idea of how to build your eBay feedback because that's really important as this new storage unit buyer is how to grow your eBay store to kind of help build that feedback. Consignment stores, uh, we'll just click this video for the, uh, for the giggles here and see. So basically I go through a consignment store. Look at that intro, guys. Look at that intro. All right. So this is just, I want to teach you everything, right? So what's up, guys? So we're going to do a quick video on consignment. Consignment is huge, guys. This is going to give you an opportunity to be able to sell stuff, put it on consignment, meaning you're going to basically house it in one of these cool places like Consignment Northwest, and then they will sell it. They'll take a cut, but you don't have to house it. You don't have to have space for it. They have a lot of customers. You'll sell it quicker. You'll get that cash. You can turn around and buy more storage units. So let's go take a look at Consignment Northwest, guys. They've got a really cool building in here. All right. Well, we'll fast we forward. But fine. And so I so I go through Consignment um, Rental Booths. So if you go to Antique Malls, it's almost the closest thing you can have to a brick and mortar for foot traffic. Um, make your own flea market, garage sales, warehouses, all this stuff, right? Um, and then we go into the hard goods. I teach you selling hard goods, um, what tools you need, different ways that I make the beautiful white backgrounds. We have, you know, USPS supplies and just everything you can think of in here to kind of help you guys. And then we also have a licensed CPA, not your dad. CPA is an amazing. Mark. Um, he does all the taxes, so you can learn about taxes. Poshmark, we have some experts in the Poshmark field. But think about this, guys. This is all what you're getting. Uh, for 129 bucks, you're getting all these. So, and there's going to be continuously more videos added to kind of help you with storage units. Uh, but that's kind of the idea. I'll show you one last one here and then we'll stop the screen share. Uh, let's see. I don't know what you guys want to see, but we go through, um, I was, one of the managers was really, really cool at this facility and allowed me to go through all the different sizes to show you guys the common sizes that you get in storage units. More importantly, so you know how much stuff typically would fit in there. So, how much would be in there, yeah. Yeah. Look at look at the intro, guys. <laughs> they, they get more crazy, actually. This is just a basic one. But uh... – All right, guys. This is a uh, very, very important video in the course. This is going to be going over the sizes of different storage units. The reason I wanted this video is I want to show you how much people can pack into one storage unit so you understand how many trips you're going to have to make. And then also before you bid. Sorry, guys. I was really tired in this video because I actually just picked up a unit. But before, before you win the unit, understand that there's a ton of stuff that can be packed up in these storage units. So it's very important to understand both online and live when you're bidding how big these units are because they're very deceiving. You, when you look online, it may look like there's not a lot of stuff in there, but when you get in there, you realize there's two or three X more than you expected. So we're going to go over four or five to okay, show well, you. Um, so, I might, so I got through all the storage units, guys. This is more of a basic video, um, but that's kind of the idea here. This is everything you need to know. This, Believe it or not, this is the only storage unit course in existence right now, and it's going to put yourself, put yourself in the best position to win. Um, yeah, and this is it. This is it, guys. So.
Let's jump back here. Okay, yeah. so there we go. So just watching the samples, you guys just seen that for the first time with me. I, it's the first time I've seen it at all. Literally, I've known about this for X amount of time, but um, I haven't got, because Wade just got it all up and done and finished. So I have not even got a chance to watch through these, um, which is going to be my, of course, homework for uh, whatever I get access. Uh, and you have a call with Kajabi for me tomorrow, yes. right? Okay. Yes. So um, as I get to watch these and get more information, I'll be able to kind of give you guys some more lead ho on this. If you're watching this later, not live on January 2nd, 2020 at 9.30 PM, um, and you have questions, concerns, comments, feel free to comment them below. Um, you can also email me and I'll, I'll forward it to Wade or you can email Wade directly. Is that best way to get you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Email Instagram is actually a quick way guys. If you Instagram have answers quick. Yeah. So uh, again, his YouTube channel is below. You can find all of his other stuff. It's Wade's Ventures. If you type it into Instagram, you'll find it really quick. Uh, YouTube, it'll come right up. So easy to find, easy to get a hold of. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, please don't hesitate. Uh, no question is stupid. Trust me. Uh, we see it all. So uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, no, yeah. we're happy to help. But uh, it's storage unit. It takes a certain kind of buyer, seller, yeah. person. Um, you know, obviously, if you're working out of a one bedroom apartment and you have a, a Kia uh, Forte car, maybe it's not for you. But there's a lot of you watching right now that I know can do this and know yeah. want to do this. And Wade's going to help you. So if, if right now you're watching during this live show or you're one of the re replay people, um, sign up, get it with Wade, and he will help you one-on-one. -on -one. You get his phone number, man. You can like Wade flicks and chill while you're texting him. I mean, that's yes. crazy. So yeah. um, don't wait. Let me know. Uh, let Wade know. Just use my name, Rockstar Flipper. Let him know that you watch the show, and uh, he'll help you out. Uh, if you're watching this way down the road – that's why you got to subscribe and watch early so you get these specials. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, Wade has put 120 videos. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. So that's that, like what happened. I thought it would be like, of my video. <laughs> I thought it'd be 40. And my my beautiful wife, Ashley, I know you're in chat, honey. So you know she's, she's She's the one that edits it. And so she was like, are we done yet? And then it was 80. And then she's like, are we done yet? No, are we no, done no. Yet? no, we got to continue. We got to continue. So, are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I, I, I'm always hovering over his shoulder. Uh, are we done with this one? So she, yeah, because uh, those of you that don't know, um, Ashley does. She does most of your editing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah she does. It's. I'm glad. Like, if if you asked me if I would do this storage unit course again, I'd probably say no because <laughs> I, I probably would. Because the amount of work that goes into this, I mean, it's it's different that you can't be behind. Like, you can, you have to be out there showing people. That's kind of yeah. the, the idea, right? And so. Yeah. There's so many different situations with storage units, and I kind of want to show every single angle. So it gets it gets interesting. So you've got to really be there and show people, and um, and that's why I want to add a ton more videos. To I want you guys, like I said, to to go back when you buy this tonight, be like I would have spent a thousand dollars on that storage unit course, hands down. Because not only have I learned storage units, I've also learned like what type of businesses would do best, and 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 then also how to sell it, and and not only that, what platforms to use, and just everything, right? So that's it's it's been incredible and it, it's been a great experience. But more importantly, it's gonna allow you guys to be successful with another sourcing opportunity. And that's what storage units can yeah. be. And I know a lot of people that have really bad thrift store goodwill, like not just yeah. my area, goodwill is terrible. We have other options, but yeah. um, there's just, you know, even smaller towns that have a lot of storage units. Yeah. Um, there's web multiple websites to use. So I'm sure yeah. obviously those are in there. Um, and there's also, if I know Wade well enough, I know that he probably touches on how to talk to yeah. and contact the storage unit managers and owners directly. Yeah. There's so much, there's so much in there. There's also videos. So this gives you an idea. You guys seen it, right? But these are all my videos here. There's 12 pages of them. I mean, I also do a, um, a video on how to communicate and what questions to ask the staff at the facilities to gain more information before you even buy the unit, right? So um, a, one of the biggest questions you can ask is how long have they been there? And the reason you ask that question is a lot of times, a lot of facilities will offer one or two months free, right? So you kind of want to stay away from those units that are newly, you know, renters there because what happened? Like, why are they, why have they only rented a month or a month, month and a half, two months, and now they're no they longer letting go. Yeah. yeah. So there's just too many things there. Typically, and, and then not to spoil too much of the video, but what he's saying is if somebody only rented a place for two months and they almost got it for free or nothing, and then they let it go, there's a chance that the stuff inside probably didn't have a lot of value to them that they were just willing to let it go out the door. So 
Um, you know, and then you've got people that paid for units. You know, I know a lady that paid for a unit for two years at a hundred bucks a month. You're talking about twenty four hundred dollars that whatever was inside. Yeah, there's some sentimental value stuff, but there's some people that pay for that because what's inside is actually worth far more than the hundred dollars a month times X amount of months that they paid. So um, yeah, these are what we talk about. Uh, I got to stop for a second with the chat because Paul DeLeo, who he's a CPA here in Florida that I know, uh, just said the faster way to make money is just to resell Wade's phone number a hundred times. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> talk about talk, talk about flipping something. <laughs> hey, I, I know Paul. He's amazing. I, I that is hilarious. I there was one question to you. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Do you uh, do you teach people how to clean up stuff you find in the units? Oh yeah, good question. I just there is some videos on that. Yeah, and and like I said, it's um. I teach what stuff you need to use. Also, how to how to take pictures of it, and and some videos. There's a couple of videos on how to to approach like you know because you, when you buy the unit, you've got to process it right, right. Um, and then you've got to figure out okay, is this going to be online? Is this worth enough to be online? Remember, with storage units, you get sheer volume, so you'd be shocked how many times when you buy one or two storage units that the price that you're willing to put online goes up because you have so much stuff. For example, if you buy three units you're going to find a lot of stuff that's over $50 normally that you can sell. And then soon the stuff that's under 30 or 40, you're no longer going to want to sell online because the sheer volume of stuff that you have that's worth more money. Mm. It, it kind of tops that. So you got to find different ways. Okay. Is that going to be local? Is that going to be online? Cause there's a local is typically the lower end of the stuff. And then on top of that, you've got, you know, the, the trash and the donation part of it. So yeah, um, that's kind of what, where I was at when I first started buying storage units, I would be putting on those eight or $9 profit items. And then as I continue to buy more and more units, um, you found that the, the amount that you're getting paid for the items are higher because you just have so much stuff to deal with. And, um, so there's just so many different ways that you can go about that. Some people don't have flea markets. Like I don't have a flea market. So I tend to be more of an online seller, but then I do cater towards people that have flea markets. And we did a video on that with some really cool people. Um, so there's just so many cool, and we have night required on there as well. He did a video on local sales. Is he ah. that? Oh what? man, he's my favorite reseller in the history of the world. Yeah, we he did a 22 minute video, guys, wow. talking about local selling. So it's not just me on there. I wanted to bring in a few other people so that way you can get different perspectives. Night, uh, good old night. <laughs> yeah, and up up. up uh, a British posture guy. She's amazing. She's amazing. She did. A oh, from Instagram. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. She did a 30 minute video showing you how to sell on Poshmark. There right? you go. So way to recruit some other people. Yeah. yeah. You're not getting just storage and stuff. You're getting how to sell it as well. Right. There you go. So uh, that's like our 35 point selling point of the thing. So yeah. 120 videos, guest appearance, cameos, yeah. um, Wade doing ridiculous out in the wild work. Uh, you know, if this is you, if this is what you thought about, I know there was a lot of people that watched some of your videos got huge views last year. So there's a lot of people that have that itch. A lot of people that are going to watch this and see this and be interested. So um, don't wait, get Wade's phone number. Apparently it has really good resale value. You yeah. may get your $129 just out of Wade's phone number. So yeah. um, <laughs> this may not end in, in the way you thought it was going to end. But. No, no, no. Did, has anybody bought it yet? Because if you have, message me really quick and I'll, I'll send you my phone number. But yeah, uh, Paul, you're the only person. I, I, I can't give you my phone number, my man. <laughs> I can look at the first person that sends a $500 super chat right now. I'll put it out publicly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course you would. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, no one send that. No one send that. Cause I'm not refunding the 30% yeah. that, that, e that YouTube takes. <laughs> yeah, All right. Yeah. So I, uh, what I want to do since we, we've been on for a little bit is if there's any questions we can answer right now, quickly, um, put them in the chat. Uh, any questions directly for Wade? If you watch later, of course, obviously contact us comments or emails. Um, but just, I want to make sure anything that we can answer, we do right now. And then the links below number one is Wade's YouTube channel. Again, check his videos out last night's video, new year's day, January 1st, 2020 is the video about the storage units. And then number two is the direct link to work with Wade and set up the program and get everything you need. Um, and that's all you'll need to do is just click one of those two links or both of them would be awesome. Uh, everybody's always, okay, Ryan, everybody's always talking about finding good sourcing, but everybody has storage sheds locally. From what I have experienced, it doesn't take a ton of overhead to get started. So 
talking about the overhead. Yeah, there's really not a lot of overhead that that is needed up front. Now, it really depends on your situation. For me, when I first started, I had to rent Penske trucks or U-Haul trucks. Mm. You've got the rental fee there. You've got the gas, um, the extra $14 insurance. Then you've got the cost of the storage unit. Um, then possibly if you have dump fees because you will get stuff here that's just not worth selling, that's also yeah. not worth donating. But I always recommend you find different avenues to get rid of stuff donation-wise. School mm-hmm. is another one, nonprofits, Salvation Army, Goodwill. But also there's a lot of cool places like um, the uh, veterans, um, different veteran um, nonprofits that take a lot of home goods and stuff that is not worth selling. So try to get rid of that stuff. But more importantly, it really takes very little capital to get started. You don't need a to show that you're a business. You can just buy – anybody can buy a storage unit. Yep. You don't need an extra license. You literally can go there, and I recommend you go there, bring some coffee, and just enjoy it. You don't have to buy anything, but you can get the lay of the land if you go live. And if you're preferring online, that's where you need to get my phone number so I can help you buy some good units. <laughs> what uh, size uh, – the question Vic just asked, what size town is it that you live in? I'm in a pretty big area. So I'm I'm in uh, Portland, Oregon. So, I mean, it's a, it's massive, right? But I've also done this in small towns too. So I've bought units. I bought – hundred over over 200 units online and just in the last two years but i've also done primarily live auctions so i've done both right and um i i love small towns because sometimes you can get some really good antique vintage stuff out of those towns mm-hmm. um and i and then you go you know in the city and sometimes you do get like you know more modern um household type units so really just depends i've done both yeah here in here in florida it's the same so obviously i live in a big area tampa and st pete um, between me and Orlando, which is an hour and 10 away, there's some small towns called Lakeland. Mm-hmm. Some people might be familiar with it because if you ever see Florida, like the mud pits and the mud bogs, and then north of that is, is they call it the swamp Gainesville and the University of Florida, whatever. It's like an hour and a half north of us, like in between the middle. So mm-hmm. like you have me and Orlando over here and then up here is Gainesville. So all that area is a big, you know, small sure. mud town. I don't want to use the word redneck, but a little bit. Um, it's country boys. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, and those are small towns and they have so many storage units there. It's crazy when I go on the website. So yeah. and a lot of that place is older folk and they do have vintage and, and antiques. So, um, yeah. somebody said I used to live in Beaverton, Great Bend's and Hillsboro. Uh, that's, yeah. that's Wade's backyard. Yeah. Um, how much is a unit? Uh, you know, they average, what do you think the average unit you buy is? So I actually did, um, I did a video on this actually, people don't realize this, but did you guys know, especially when you go live primarily, but sometimes online, that you can buy a storage unit really commonly for a dollar, $5, $50. I know a lady that that does over a hundred grand a year, hundred grand a year, just buying units under $50. Um, But with that though, understand that when you buy those cheaper units, there's a lot of trash in there. There's a lot of stuff that you're going to donate. Um, sometimes you hit some really nice home runs for the price because it looks bad, but really when you get into it, it's great. Mm-hmm. But um, that being said, uh, I would say the it really depends on where you're at in the country. If you're in like let's say California, uh, a unit here in Oregon that goes for 300 may go for 900 in California, depending on where they're at. Yeah. Right? So really depends on where you're at. That's why it's really important to be bilingual and understand both live and online. But I believe. As a new, a new storage unit buyer, even though online may be a little bit more expensive, it's less intimidating because you are behind a computer. You're not in a live auction. You can be in your comfort of your home and bid and not see anybody except the person that you need to pay at the facility. So a lot less confrontation. You don't get nervous. I think that online, just to get your feet wet and buy a few would probably be the best option. Right. I, I agree with that. The, the non-confrontational um, it, yeah. behind your screen much better than in person. Uh, yeah. Layla, do you cross post? Yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff, uh, cross posting comes down to two things. One is the price. Obviously if something's selling much higher on one platform than another, uh, the second thing is, uh, that particular platforms, policies, procedures, you can't sell antiques on Poshmark. So that goes eBay. You can't sell, um, you know, like used clothing on Amazon. So you kind of have to figure out each platform specialties and policies and then kind of check the pricing and how quickly it sells. So, uh, that's how we choose that. I just saw uh, average unit. We just talked about that. That was with um, with into light media productions. Appreciate that question. Average unit. You know the ones I were buying were anywhere. I gotta <coughs> sneeze. Excuse me. Um, uh, most of the units that I bought back in the day were between 
<laughs> sneezing again, 50 and 150. You know, I was spending 100, 120, 140. The unit I videoed, the two units I videoed during this year were $30 and $90. Um, the $30 unit was full of shoes, Nike yeah. shoes and shirts. I yeah. made six, seven hundred off that one. The other one for ninety was full of a bunch of random stuff, but did yeah. get some toys, a couple of video games, made a couple hundred bucks off of that one. Um, so you can get a, a good mix. I mean, you know, I didn't spend much at all on those units. Also, keep in mind that the units typically do charge uh, a ten percent buyer fee, and you will pay sales tax. Uh, sales tax certificate is important. Um, most units, if not all of them, will accept sales tax certificates that you can put on file. Um, why are so many international buyers shipping to Miami shipping companies? Uh, that's a Florida question. The answer is because in two cities, Miami and uh, Brevard County, Miami, uh, Dade, Brevard County, there's a town. Uh, Davie is one of them, D-A-V-I-E, but also uh, south of there near the port cities, they import to the islands. They send to Jamaica, to St. Thomas, St. Martin. So you may be shipping to, um, to Florida and that's great. Once it arrives, you're covered. But most of those packages are ending up outside of Florida, uh, down in the islands or even South America, Central America. So if you ever get that, uh, a lot of times you'll see the name will say like Edgar Rodriguez and then it'll say like 9654381. That's because he has a shipping account number with a third party shipper and he's probably not in America. But that's not your problem because you're covered because they uh, it's called uh, D-O-R-A-L, uh, Durrell, Florida is, is where most of them are. Okay. Do you counter offer a lot on your listings? Yeah, we do. Um, our thrift stores are terrible. I have heavy competition stalking the marketplace. It may be better in the storage unit side of things. Um, I mean, that may be something, you know, I don't know what town you're in, but feel free to email me and I'll see if we can't, you know, help you get to work with Wade and see if it's better. Um, bring gloves and disinfectant. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, it, it, remember it's, it, it's, really doesn't take much effort to buy a storage unit it is physically demanding. So understand that sometimes, you know, you go in there and there's furniture, you got to understand your situation, right? If you can't handle a lot of furniture, then that's fine. You can still get that unit. Just donate the furniture and work with kind of the smaller items. Yeah. You got to understand your situation. It does take space, but I can tell you one thing. It seems scary at first, you know, buying storage units seems really scary. But once you buy it and you go through your first one, you realize it's quite simple and you can do extremely well. And, so, you know, you got to put yourself in that in, in the shoes of it's just something new and another way to source. And um, it's a great way to source, especially since Goodwills and all these places, they understand. I mean, Goodwill boutiques now, um, you know, they're they're The prices are going higher. So you've got to you got to kind of, you know, make different buying decisions for your sourcing. So. Yeah, you're not competing with the store when you're in storage units. You're only competing with the market, so it's a lot easier. Um, yep. Do you have respirators in those units? I don't think I've ever used a respirator. No. I can think of. No. Um, I've got some units where I'm like, you know, but no. <laughs> Why aren't you on Storage Wars? Um, storage Wars doesn't air anymore. Uh, no, that, they don't film new content. Uh, yeah. That was... You know, the first store, people don't believe it, but if you go to Wikipedia right now, and this is this is what I was telling you guys when I moved to my house is when I stopped because that was part of it. But Storage Wars, the first episode ever aired in late 2010, 2011. So that's when I was buying. I bought units. So I moved to Florida in 05. I did my Craigslist local thing for like two years to 07, 08. I didn't find storage units until about 2008, 2009-ish. And that's when I first started buying them. And then, you know, fast forward a year and a half, two years later, it goes on TV and everything goes nuts. And that's when I kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Storage Wars has been on for nine years and they stopped filming, basically stopped filming. I know they went to Canada or something, yeah. but um, they stopped filming new, new footage not that long ago. So you watch a lot of replays, but I don't think they're out actively looking for new uh, storage people. Um, interesting comment from Julianne. Uh, I just went ahead and put it on the screen. That's fine. Sorry, YouTube. Uh, it's true. I'm going to tell you the unit. I've talked about it before. We bought it, uh, $330. It was 300 plus the, the 30 buyer premium, um, full of some tools, full of some, uh, a digital camera. This is probably again, 2009, 2010. Um, lots of video game, all kinds of stuff made hundreds, hundreds of dollars, a big flat screen TV, which at the time was like 48 inches was big and they didn't even exist. So I was able to sell a used one for like 400 bucks, which was crazy. A 48 inch TV. Think about that. Um, but inside of one of the duffel bags, little carry bag was like 30 
uh, adult nature toys that we, I opened the bag to this day. I don't know if there was anything else in the bag, but it got zipped back up and it went out right out the door. So yeah. Yeah, as soon as I unzipped it, I saw I'm like, whoop, zip. there could have been uh, uh, 10 grand in cash in the bottom of that bag. I have no idea, but <laughs> it, <wasn't laughs> it probably did. And there probably was 10 grand and she probably hit it there on purpose and I'm an idiot, but uh, you know, I should have cut the bottom of it open just to make sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. You Remember, there, that's why it's important, I think. If I would have had an opportunity to have like even 50 videos on storage units that were kind of all in one area, I would have been better at, at the beginning. Um, people don't realize that a lot of the like rings and gold and stuff, you'll see a lot of that stuff hidden in um, bathroom type stuff because people don't oh, think yeah. look in there, right? There's so many different things that you got to think of. Um, and when you go into storage units, if you see, you need to see expendable income. Uh, when you're profiling, you know, like different things that cost money, sporting goods, stuff like that. Yep. That's kind of what you want to look for, expendable income. If they have money on this, well, I say this, we are an American, it's credit card, you know. But that being said, look for expendable income. That's one way you can kind of profile units. There's just so many things, guys. There's so many things. Uh, we're going to ask two more questions. Um, Candice, have you ever had a confrontation with anyone? Um, yeah, so this is a um, this is an interesting one. I, I haven't had you got to put yourself in a, in a safe position here. Like you're going to find videos possibly that show, you know, confrontation with the old owners, whether you're giving stuff back or not, you kind of want to use the facility as a, as a, um, a, a middle ground, right? Because if you find something that you want to get back to the individual, because look, we are, it, it does get sensitive, right? You're going through people's life or their stuff. Um, you need to use the facility to give that back. You don't give it back directly. You put yourself in a very bad position if you do that, especially mm -hmm. if you're a buyer and you can't control the environment, right? So right. Yeah. Um, you know, I've not had a confrontation. I did have one lady that was actually at the facility at the same time I was there to pick it up and actually convinced the facility to give her back her unit if she paid her bill. So I and she did. And she did. She paid her bill and that was that. So you, you've, there's the, you know, I really, the, it's, there's no, you see a lot of the shows and you see a lot of that, but really it's pretty down to earth. The only competition I would say you have is possibly when you go to live auctions with other bidders, right? Um, yeah. That's the only time. There you go, guys. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't happen yeah. if at all often. Yeah. Um, can you do it? I'll, I'll end it here. Um, can you do this part-time, not a full-time reseller yet? Absolutely. Like the first four years I bought storage units, I had a full-time corporate job. And I bought what maybe eight a month, which is pretty good. Every two days, I or every day or week, yeah. every two days, yeah. So um, you definitely can do this part time. You've got to you kind of got to pick and choose, right? I don't know your your situation, how many hours you work at your job, but understand that you need to allow probably two days. So when you pick up the unit, it takes time to process it, get it all out, clean the unit, go home. You know, there's a lot of process to it. So you got to understand kind of what your flow is. But absolutely, you can do this part time. In fact, that it's the best time to do it, really, because you have that guaranteed income, and then you can kind of do this on the side and really understand the business if you're potentially wanting to go full time later on. Yeah, and it's it's once you do it, you're gonna you're gonna notice that you need to go full time. I assure you. So yeah, um, Lex Lexi, I did just get the email. Lexi did just pick it up, so it's in my email. It should be in Wade's as well. So nice. Uh, thank you, thank you, Lexi. Um, nice. Lexi. So there you go. You've got your first little customer there. Yeah, uh, appreciate, yeah appreciate that. And uh, and thanks to everyone. I want to say quick, Dominic, last night's live show, great. Thanks for joining us tonight. Adam, my admin, always here, always dependable. Thank you. Um, and uh, everybody else, Dave and Bill and everybody who joined us in eBay Open and Paul was here. So great to have Paul. Thanks, guys. I know I didn't shout you out earlier. but uh, And big thanks to Wade. We're going to wrap it up here in a second um, to join us tonight. First show, first live show of the year. Um, 2020 right. guys, it's a new year. You got to do, do, got to do new things. Say that three times fast. Got to do new things. Got to open yourself up to new, new sourcing styles, new sourcing places, new ways to get inventory. Um, you know, if things weren't working for you last year, I always say this, if it's not working, fix it. The old saying, if it's not broken, you know, don't fix, if it's not working, you got to fix it. Um, and probably 75% of the emails I receive are people that are having issues sourcing good merchandise or just sourcing in general. They live in small towns. They don't have good thrift stores. Their thrift stores charge $30 for um, Wade's Ventures hats. Um, they, all these sort of things that go crazy. So uh, it's, it's a new way to do it. And, you know, I've done it plenty in my life. 
it's even something I'm still open to. I love storage units. Here's the best, probably my number one thing. Why do a lot of us thrift in the first place? Why do we thrift? What, what is the reason we thrift? Besides making money. We all know we want to make money. Oh, but what else? It's uh, adrenaline when you find that. Perfect. Yeah, that treasure hunt, right? That treasure hunt. So we didn't plan that. But the treasure hunt, the thrill of the hunt, the adrenaline. Uh, I, I got to say, thinking back on the storage units, it was probably, you know, going to thrift stores, you see something yeah. sitting on the shelf. It's great to find stuff, digging through racks, whatever. But when you go in a storage unit, you're digging through hundreds of things. You're like, whoa, what's mm -hmm. that? Whoa, what's that? Whoa. So um, those of you that have the thrill of the hunt, um, there's no better like rush than than finding that stuff. So if uh, I, I wish that like I can allow you guys to just try it once and understand the experience that goes with it. it it's incredible when you hit that really good unit. And it doesn't need to be like we're going to make, you know, 50,000. But even a unit that you make a few thousand. It's such a cool experience and it gets you addicted. I'm going to warn you now, you're, you're going to get addicted. <laughs> um, but think about this. The last point I want to make is people think because of the show, the storage unit industry, the prices are really high. And yes, there's a lot more awareness to it. But get this. In my area, there's three big old storage facilities being built currently. And there's eight of them within a, a few mile radius already. So the vast majority of people that have storage units you think would be people that have you know, smaller living areas, like maybe apartments or townhomes. Mm -hmm. Really, it's the people that have houses and garages that have units. It's, 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 it's a fact that a mo majority of people that own storage units are actually people that have houses and garages. They just have excess amount of stuff, right? So um, especially know your area. If you are in an area with a military base or something like that, you can be cashing in massively. Massive. Right? Um, yep. So know your area. And, and if you're in an area that necessarily isn't a really expensive town or, you know, there's still good units to be made there. More importantly, understand that the units may be even cheaper for you than if you were in a, a really big city. So there's so many cool things. Just make sure even if you, you're not wanting to buy one storage unit, keep your eyes peeled on the different websites because um, you may also have an opportunity for a business storage unit. And that's a whole nother segment. Businesses go out of business all the time and you can pick up a yep. lot of merchandise. Yep. So I'm going to show you, hold on just real quick. This is just, this is my area. Um, and I, I think that I can, you guys can see this. Let me full screen it. I just did a random search for storage units in my area. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 storage units. This, this drive, if I drove all the way in a circle, this is only about a 15 to 20 minute circle right here. Yeah. Um, so if you guys look to the far right corner, it says purple extra space storage. Everyone knows where I live. I don't care. Um, I live in this huge neighborhood called Bloomingdale. I know it's high class Bloomingdale. It's really not. Um, but uh, so you guys can see where I live. And uh, there's about 5,000 homes in this square down here. Yeah. Um, south of us are more storage units. But that extra space is the one right outside my neighborhood. And then there's three at the next red light. This is one mile up. These three uh there in that corner these these three right here and then all the way down our main road all the way up the side road and all the way up the other main road that is 19 storage units i can get to the farthest one in 10 minutes um this this area you're looking at is not tampa florida this is called brandon florida the suburbs if i was to zoom this out this is going to blow people's minds even more but give it just a second let's see if we can um uh, change the little search here and, and you need to do this in your area. This isn't even on the website. This is just on uh, <laughs> my map. Yeah. So there is the ones past the 19 and that is Tampa. And if you look at that far middle little peninsula right there, where it says Palmacia cube smart, that in thing is the military base here. That's about a half an hour from me. Um, and that's why you see what Wade just said, North of that military base, Look at all those storage units. So between me and the military base is easily 40 or 50 storage unit locations. There's probably some that aren't even appearing on this map. Um, yep. And, you know, that's that's the greater Tampa Bay area. And when you zoom out even more, a lot of people don't realize. Um, so they uh, let's just see if it'll pop up here. Um, if I can zoom out once or twice, that's nah, not going to let me. But uh that is St. Pete Clearwater, the beaches that everyone talks about over there. There's probably 40 or 50 more over there. So I want everyone who's even remotely interested thinks, oh, I don't know if I live in a town. Yeah, there you go. So there's even more on the other side. So you can see how many are reasonably close to me. It's nuts. You don't have to live in a town. If there's that many in my town, any town in America, there's 
plenty of mom and pops. So yeah. um, the, the, I mean, storage, the storage unit game trumps goodwill all day long. You're gonna make all day, money. all day. And, Every day. And keep in mind too, like in, in in the course, I also teach social media and how that intertwines with storage units. For example, if a storage unit is going up for four hundred, but you're on YouTube, you're probably possibly could make fifty. 200 uh, 50 100 150 dollars on a video so it allows you to take more risk when it comes to the storage units because you're going to make a little bit on the you uh, the google youtube revenue right so right right uh, and i did a storage unit like casey was talking about i made fourteen thousand, fourteen 14k on that one video right so you also have that possibility as well and and get this when i had that video that went viral i think i was only at eight thousand subscribers right now i'm at 62 so it doesn't necessarily go off a of subscriber count. It's your nope. video, right? So the it's also, I do, uh, I think, seven videos on social media that kind of teaches you the different ways that you can approach storage unit buying with social media to grow a YouTube channel as well. So. There you go. So other options that we've all talked about yeah. um, this year on social media side of it as well. So perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, okay. So I think that's where we're gonna wrap that up. Lots of opportunity, obviously, and uh, make sure you guys check out Wade below. Number one is this channel, that's where you start. And number two is the link to sign up. Uh, if you wanna watch the video from last night, it's New Year's Day. Um, thank Wade, take time to, to comment on his video and his Instagram, thank him for his time, for his work, for his program, uh, for the videos he puts up, for everything that he does for everyone. And uh, if you have an opportunity also later this year when we're at eBay Open or wherever we go, if there is an eBay Open, we're not sure yet, hopefully, um, come out and hang out with us. That's your best, yeah. your best bet. We'll, uh, we'll oh, yeah. talk to you. We'll hang out. We'll get crazy. And uh, you'll have a better understanding in person of what we do. Yep. And uh, Lexi, good luck with Wade. Thank you so much for signing up. Yep. He'll be in touch. And anybody else, comments below, emails. Uh, and until next time, uh, we'll have Wade back as soon as we can. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time tonight. Yes. Uh, we kept them an hour, so uh, we'll let him roll. Yep. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys.